So do hyperlocal companies like Uber, Ola, Swiggy, Gojek, Zomato, etc. share our phone numbers with the delivery agents or theirs with us? If they do, then that would be a massive breach of privacy. Hence, they have a system in place that instead of sharing the actual phone numbers, they share a masked version of it. In this video, we talk about how these hyperlocal companies work with telecom operators to generate virtual phone numbers and keep our privacy intact. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toilet balancer to Crickbus's live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So, if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I've also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I'm looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So phone numbers are extremely critical because it is a personally identifiable information. So for example, just imagine if your phone number gets leaked in public, you will be added to random groups, people would be sending you random calls or people would be sending you random messages, things could go wrong. Worse, people can do social engineering on you and can hack your accounts. It would be so, so, so easy for you because they can exactly pinpoint who you are. So which is where the companies with whom you share your contact number, maybe during login, maybe, maybe during the transaction or basically getting an order delivered, it's their responsibility to keep them secured, right? Which is where the idea of virtual phone numbers kick in. They are extremely temporary, very limited to a transaction. So now let's define the problem segment. The problem segment is pretty simple. We have like we are Gojek and by the way, this entire design is taken from Gojek's engineering block, which I've linked in the description down below. Do give it a read. So let's say we are Gojek and we have a customer A and a delivery agent D. Customer A's phone number is let's say 1234, while delivery agent phone number is 6789. So what do we want? We want A to not get D's actual number. We want D to not get A's actual number, but still they both should be able to call each other. Such a fancy situation to be in. Right? So this is where virtual phone numbers kick in. So here telecom providers like Airtel, Geo, Exotel, Twilio, like there may be the actual telecom companies or maybe an intermediate company who have a partnership with them. Right? But someone to make our life simple issues virtual phone numbers. Right? So Exotel, Twilio are the biggest providers of that. They have extensive documentation. Go read them. Right? So telecom provider like Airtel, Geo, Exotel, Twilio provide virtual numbers. They look very similar to actual phone number, but they are functional right? and they are very transactional. So now what happens is let's say we call a service like VN service, which is your virtual number service. So these vendors, they have a list of phone numbers. They already have a list of virtual phone numbers, which they periodically send to us or rather we request them and they send to us. It depends on the API contract that you have with them. But the idea is vendors like Exodel Twilio, they have a list of phone numbers. You make a call to them and they would share a bunch of phone numbers with you, right? Which are virtual, which you can assign it at your will. They are your private phone numbers, 
right? So you make a call, you get it and you put it in your database. So you keep them handy for your transaction to work because you on the fly, if you make that call to them and they don't have a number, then would you not do like, like, like basically, would you not move forward? No, you would still want to be functional, which is what happens is vendors keep a list of handy. You make a call, they, they share it with you. You keep a lot of virtual numbers handy with you for in order for you to assign it to your orders, right? So this is what the first step looks like. So now does every user get a virtual number? Now, if I, if we ask this particular question, does every user get a virtual number? Now imagine if there is a one to one mapping of it. Okay, let's say, Hey, I'm Arpit. My actual number is one, two, three, and I'm assigned a number. Let's say a, 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 it is actually a number, but I'm just representing it a so that you can visually distinguish it. So let's say I'm my, I'm a, my actual number is one, two, three, and my virtual number is a, if I keep it static, if I keep it static, what would happen? It is very easy for anyone to social engineer because there is no problem at all. Right, because like you used to give them call to an actual number, but now if virtual number also remains the same, you can give a call to virtual number also. Right. So which means that you cannot have a one-to-one -one mapping always, like a permanent one-to-one -one mapping between a user's actual number and a virtual number. Right. So which means that we have to make it temporarily allocated. And then after some time, it should be assigned to someone else, right? But it cannot remain same for the same user. Like you cannot just have one number for one user always, like till eternity, right? And second reason is if let's say there is a customer that come that came onto Gojek and it just assigned or, or he or she just made one order and never came back onto the platform, right? Never. Now, if you just assign one number for each user forever, then if you have a million users, you need a million numbers, even though most of them are not even being used. Quite possible. So, which is where, what do we need? Like the constraints that we play with is we need virtual number assignment should be number one on demand, which means when I request it, I should be able to get it. Second, they should be temporarily for a transaction or order. Right. Once that is done, virtual number should be unassigned so that it is assigned to someone else. This way we make the best use of our available resources while being cost effective at the same time. Okay. Now let's take a look how virtual numbers are assigned. So virtual numbers are assigned to all the involved parties in a transaction. So let's say if I placed an order, an online order, so virtual number will be assigned to me and the driver. Right. So here, so it's specific to a transaction. Now, what does this mean? This means that if, and obviously we have seen in hyperlocal delivery that a delivery agent a, uh, or rather a, a delivery agent can be delivering multiple orders, right? So for each transaction, the delivery agent will be assigned a new virtual number. So for example, if let's say delivery agent is delivering two orders, right? So one with A, other with B and the delivery agent is D. So for A, a with delivery agent D for a particular transaction, D will be assigned a virtual number and for B and D, it will be assigned another virtual number. So if any of those numbers are called, the call will go to that same delivery agent, right? So this is what is extremely important. Otherwise that same problem comes in that we just discussed, right? So now what do we do? We have a bunch of virtual numbers stored in our database. So when an order happens, Right? We go to the database, pick two numbers, pick two virtual numbers from them and assign it to our transaction and rather assign it to the individual prop, uh, individual entities of our transaction, individual parties of our transaction. Right? So that is what we'll do. But now how? How does our arc, how does our architecture look like? So it looks like something like this. Right? So here what do we have? So here we have our vendor like Twilio, Exotel, Idle, they have a bunch of virtual numbers which they exchange with our VN service. VN service stores it in the database, right? So now this is what is happening. We have our users A, B, these are customers and D is the delivery agent, right? All these three users phone number are stored in our authentication table or profile table, right? We have the actual phone number with us, right? And their A's actual number is 1, 2, 3. B's actual number is 7, 8, 9. D's, which is delivery agents, actual number is 456, right? So now what do we want? We do not want A's 1, 2, 3 to be sent to D. Let, let's say D as a delivery agent is assigned order to be delivered for A as well and B as well, right? So we do not want 1, 2, 3 to be shared with D. We do not want 7, 8, 9 of B to be shared with D either or rather D's number with A and B, right? So no need to that happen. So first of all, we need to do virtual number assignment. So how do we do that? So when would we assign the number, the number, the virtual number will be assigned when 
the order is placed and the driver is alerted right so we have our order service right we have our order service when a user let's say a and b place the order on the order service and that order service may like whenever a driver is assigned or something the anytime the state changes an event would be sent to a kafka right from there the consumers would read the driver assigned events and then at that time once we know that for this order this driver is assigned we talk to vn service and get two pair like sorry we get one pair of virtual numbers from the vn's database right so for example hey give me two virtual numbers because i have two parties involved a and d i want to assign virtual number to both of them once we get the pair a and d now uh, uh, once we get virtual numbers for a and d which are a a a and d d d now what we do is we go to order service and update it in the, in the orders database because orders database is where that is for this order like this order is placed by a and assigned to driver d a's virtual number is a a a and d's virtual number is d d d right that would be stored in the orders table so that we can render it in the app right because in app when you see you need to see d's number so that you can directly give him or her a call right so you need to share it so that would be part of your orders table right or orders database now how does this transaction look like right what would happen when a gives a call to the delivery agent right now what would happen so what does a have a has its own number which is 1 2 3 and it calls d delivery agent but a does not have d's number a has what a has d's anonymized number or d's virtual number which is d d d so a calls d d d now where would this call go this call would go to a telecom operator right so maybe through twilio through exotel bunch of apis to call like a lot of things could happen along that way but through that telecom operator like obviously there is a global repository where all of these things are updated then a calls ddd so 1 to 3 calls ddd now telecom agent receives the request now what would it do it does not know whom to forward to they do not know the mapping it is an application use case you know that driver d is allotted to this order from a and now a is giving the call to d now telecom operator do not know telecom operator do not know who, what to whom ddd is assigned like to who, to actual number because for telecom operator it would give call to the actual number actual number of ddd is 456 but who has that mapping we have that we as gojek have that mapping right so now what do we do telecom operator receives that request it makes a call to rvn service and rvn service would do what validate we have to validate that if this transaction is even valid or not because otherwise if you have the number you give a call then that's wrong right it has to be an active transaction against your name and that pairing should exist so what vn service would do vn service would validate the request and respond a's virtual number and d's actual number to telecom operator so now when tele when you gave a call telecom operator gets your virtual number and d's actual number so that telecom operator can actually take can only give a call to actual number so telecom operator needs d's actual number and a's virtual number you say why it needs a's virtual number because because if when you get a call from someone you see their number right but now if telecom operator do not know a's virtual number the number that it would display on the users phone when you get a call what would be the source number there a's private number you do not want that to expose so which is where you share a's virtual number which is would be used as a source number and d's actual number so then telecom connects with d on 456 d's actual number and sets source as a a a so d on his or her phone sees a that a, that it is receiving call from a a a the actual number is 1 2 3 right and this is how the bridge is set up between the user and the delivery agent without users or delivery agents number being shared with each other just ensuring the entire privacy of the transaction once the transaction is done order is delivered virtual numbers are set free so that they can be assigned to someone else now here an important step is this the validation step so that if i like then 
If I do not have that validation, this particular validation step, I can make a call to any virtual number. Then some other delivery agent would pick it or then some other customer would pick it. So which is where this, this is, this becomes an extremely important step where you are actually checking the sanity of the request that has come in. That if A is making a call, to a particular number, is there a bridge between the two or not? This is an extremely important step to ensure perfect privacy or just rather ephemeral privacy during the transaction. Right? And yeah, this is how the system is designed. Right? Now, to dive deep into this matter, what you should be doing is go through Twilio's documentation on virtual numbers. Right? Very seamless, very easy to go through a documentation like that. You understand the kind of APIs they expose so that if you are ever designing the system, you would be in a much better shape to know, to exactly know what kind of things uh, they provide, what kind of information you need to exchange, how to establish that connection and whatnot. Right? So Twilio is just, you are just a Google search away from finding it out, virtual numbers place Twilio, you will find a documentation, go through it and understand it in much, 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 much more depth. So yeah, that is it. That is it for this one. This entire thing is taken from Gojek's engineering blog, brilliantly written. I've linked it in the description down below. Highly, highly, highly recommend you to check that out. So yeah, that is it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.